Hey there. So we are on day 92 of our Through the Bible in One Year, 365 days. And we are on Judges 8 and 9. Let's jump over there and see what's going on today. <laughs> Remember Gideon's doing all kinds of stuff. Huh? Gideon kills Ziba and Zel <coughs> Zelmuna. Hmm, I don't know who that is. The people of Ephraim asked Gideon, why have you treated us this way? Why didn't you send for us when you, when you first went out to fight the Midianites? And they argued heatedly with Gideon. <laughs> but Gideon replied, what have I accomplished compared to you? Aren't even the leftover grapes of Ephraim's harvest better than the entire crop of my little clan of Abiezer? God gave you victory over, over Oreb and Zeb, the commanders of the Midianite army. What, what have I accomplished compared to that? When the men of Ephraim heard Gideon's answer, their anger subsided. Right. Gideon then crossed the Jordan River with his 300 men. <laughs> and though exhausted, they continued to chase the enemy. When they reached Succoth, Gideon asked the leaders of the town, Please give my warriors some food. They are very tired. I am chasing Zeba and Salmuna, the kings of Midian. But the officials of Succoth replied, Catch Ziba and Zidimunium first, and then we will feed your army. All right. What if we just take you with us? <clears throat> so Gideon said, After the Lord gives me victory over Ziba and Zuma, I will return and tear your flesh with the thorns and briars from the wilderness. From where Gideon went up to Peniel and asked... From there, Gideon went up to Peniel and asked again for food, but he got the same answer. So he said to the people of Peniel, After I return in, in victory, I will tear down this tower. But this time, Ziba and Zilmuna were in Karkor about 15, with about 15,000 warriors, all that remained of all the allied armies of the east, for 120,000 had already been killed. Wow. you think they would give up, huh? Gideon circled around by the caravan route <clears throat> east of Noba and Jobaga and whatever. Taking the Midianite army by surprise, Zeba and Zulma, the two Midianite kings, fled, but Gideon chased them down and captured all their warriors. After this, Gideon returned from the battle by the way of Herod Pass. There he captured a young man from Succoth and demanded that he write down the names of, the, of all of the 77 officials and elders of the town. Gideon then returned to Succoth and said to the leaders, Here are Zeba and Salmuna. When we were here before, you taunted me, saying, saying, Catch Ziba and Salmuna first, and then we will feed your exhausted army. Then Gideon took the elders of the town and taught them a lesson, punishing them with thorns and briars from the wilderness. He also tore down the tower at Peniel and killed all the men in the town. Wow. Then Gideon and asked Ziba and Salmuna, the men you killed at Tabor, what were they like? Like you, they replied. They all had the look of a king's son. <laughs> Gideon looks like a king's son. How do you like that? They were my brothers, the sons of my own mother, Gideon exclaimed. As surely as the Lord lives, I wouldn't kill you if you hadn't killed them. Turning to Jethar, his oldest son, he said, Kill them, but Jethar did not draw his sword, for he was only a boy and was afraid. Then Zeba and Zemunah said to Gideon, Be a man, kill us yourself. So Gideon killed them both and took the royal garments, ornaments from the necks of their camels. Okay, if you say so. <laughs> <clears throat> then the Israelites said to Gideon, be our ruler. You and your son and your grandson will be our rulers, for you have rescued us from Midian. But Gideon replied, I will not rule over you, nor will my son. The Lord will rule over you. However, I do have one request, that each of you give me an earring from the plunder you collected from your fallen enemies. The enemies being the Ishmaelites all wore gold earrings. Gladly, they replied, they spread out a cloak, and each one threw a gold earring he had gathered from the plunder. The weight of the gold Earrings was 43 pounds. That's a lot of gold. Not including the royal ornaments and pendants or purple clothing worn by the kings of Midian or the chains around the necks of their camels. Gideon made a sacred ephod from the gold and put it in the Oprah, his hometown. But soon the Israelites prostituted themselves by worshiping it and it became a trap for Gideon and his family. Wow. This is the story of how the people of Israel defeated Midian, which never recovered throughout the rest of Gideon's lifetime. About 40 years, there was peace in the land. Yeah, another 40 years. Then Gideon, son of Joash, returned home. He had he had 70 sons born to him, and for he had many wives. He also had a concubine in Sheshem, 
who he gave birth to a son whom he named Ab Abimelech. We've heard that name, huh? Gideon died when he was very old, and he was buried in the grave of his father, Joash, at, 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 Op at Oprah, <laughs> in the land of the clan of Abiezer. Yeah. As soon as Gideon died, the Israelites prostituted themselves by worshiping the images of Baal, making Baal birth their god. How do you like these people? They forgot the Lord their God, who had rescued them from all their enemies surrounding them, nor did they show any loyalty to the family of Zerubbabel, that is Gideon, despite all the good he had done for Israel. One day Gideon's son Abimelech went to Shechem to visit his uncles, his mother's brothers. He said to them and to the rest of the mother's family, Ask the leading citizens of Shechem whether they want to be ruled by all, by all seventy of Gideon's sons or by one man, and remember that I am your own flesh and blood. <clears throat> so Abimelech's uncles gave his message to all the citizens of Shechem on his behalf, and after listening to this proposal, the people of Shechem decided in favor of Abimelech, because he was their relative. They gave him seventy silver coins from the temple of Baal, Hereth, which he used to hire some reckless troublemakers who agreed to follow him. <laughs> wow. He went to his father's home at Oprah, and there, there on one stone they killed all seventy of his half-brothers, the sons of Gideon. But the youngest brother, Jotham, escaped and hid. Wow. Killed them all. Hmm. Then all the leading citizens of Shechem and Beth Milo called a meeting under the oak, oak beside the pillar at Shechem and made Abimelech their king. Wow, that's horrible. Jotham's parable. When Jotham heard about this, he climbed to the top of Mount Gerizim and shouted, Listen to me, citizens of Session. Listen to me and if you want God to listen to you. Once upon a time, the trees decided to choose a king, for they, they said to the olive tree, Be our king, but the olive tree refused, saying, Should I could produce in the olive oil that blesses both God and the people just to, just to wave back and forth over the trees? Then they said to the fig tree, You be our king, but the fig tree refused, saying, Said I quit producing my sweet fruit just to wave back and forth over the trees. Then, <coughs> then they said to the grapevine, You be our king, but the grapevine also refused, saying, Said I quit producing the wine that cheers both God and people just to wave back and forth over the trees. Then all the time then finally all then all the trees finally turned to the thorn bush and said, Come. You be our king, and the thorn bush replied to the trees, If you truly want to make me your king, come and take shelter in my shade. If not, let let fire come out from me and devour the cedars of Lebanon. <coughs> Weird, huh? Jotham continued, Now make sure you have acted honorably and in good faith by making Abimelech your king, and that you have done right by Gideon and all of his descendants. Have you treated him with the honor he deserves for all he accomplished? For he fought for you and risked his life when he rescued you from the Midianites. But today you have revolted against my father and his descendants, killing his seventy sons on one stone. And you have chosen his slave woman's son, Abimelech, to be your king, just because he is your relative. <clears throat> now this is a really long chapter. <clears throat> if you have acted honorably and in good faith toward Gideon and his descendants today, then may, may you find Abimelech the son, and he may he find joy in you. But if you have not acted in good faith, then may fire come down from Abimelech and devour the leading citizens of Shechem and Beth Milo, and may fire come out from the citizens of Shechem and Beth Milo and devour Abimelech. <clears throat> then Jossam escaped and lived, lived in beer because he was afraid of his brother Abimelech. Mm-hmm. Youngest son. <laughs> Session rebels against Abimelech. After Abimelech had ruled over, ruled over Israel for three years, God sent a spirit <clears throat> that stirred up trouble between Abimelech and the leading citizens of Session, and they revolted. God was punishing Abimelech for murdering Gideon's 70 sons, and the citizens of Session for supporting him in this treachery of murdering his brothers. The citizens of Session set an ambush for Abimelech on the hilltops and robbed everyone who passed that way, but someone warned Abimelech about their plot. <clears throat> One day Gal, son of Ebed, moved to Shechem with his brothers and gained the confidence of the leading citizens of Shechem. During the annual harvest festival at Shechem, held in the temple of the local god, the wine flowed freely and everyone began cursing Abimelech. Who is Abimelech? Gal shouted. He is not a true son of Shechem, so why should we be his servants? 
He is merely the son of Gideon, and this Zebul is merely his deputy. Serve the true sons of Hamor, the founder of Sheshem. Why should, why should we serve Abimelech? If I were charged, to, if, if I were in charge here, I would get rid of Abimelech. I would say to him, get some soldiers and come out and fight. <clears throat> but when Zebul, the leader of the city, heard that Gael was saying, he was furious. He sent messengers to Abimelech and Amorah, telling Gael, son of Ebed, and his brothers have come to live in Sheshem, and now they are inciting the city to rebel against you. Come by night with an army and hide out in the fields. In the morning, as soon as it is daylight, attack the city with Gael and those who are with him. Come out against you, and you can do with them as you wish. So, <clears throat> Abimelech and all his men went by night and split into four groups, stationing themselves around Sheshem. Gael was standing at the city gates when Abimelech and his army came out of hiding. When Gael saw them, he said to Zebul, Look, there are people coming down from the hilltops. Zebul replied, It is just the shadows on the hills that look like men. But Gael said again, No, people are coming down from the hills, and another group is coming down the road past the diviner's oak. Then Zebul turned on him and asked, Now where is that big mouth of yours? Now where is that big mouth of yours? Why was it, wasn't it you that said, Who is Abimelech, and why should we be his servants? Then you mocked. Then, then you mocked. The men you marked are right outside the city. Go out and fight them. So Gael, so Gael led the leading citizens of Shechem into battle against Abimelech. But Abimelech chased him, and many of Shechem's men were wounded and fell along the road as they retreated by the, to the city gate. Abimelech returned to Arumah and Zebul and drove Gael and his brothers out of Shechem. <clears throat> the next day, the people of Shechem went out to the fields to battle when Abimelech heard about it. He divided his men into three groups and set an ambush in the fields. When Abimelech saw the people coming out of the city, he and his men jumped out from their hiding places and attacked them. Abimelech and his group stormed the city gate to keep the men from Cheshire from getting back in, while Abimelech's other two groups cut down, cut them down in the fields. The battle went on all day before Abimelech finally captured the city. He killed the people, leveled the city, and scattered salt all over the ground. <laughs> so he said people would rather rule over the ashes, I guess, huh? <clears throat> When the leading citizens who lived in the Tower of Sheshem heard what had happened, they ran and hid in the temple of baal Berith. Someone reported to Abimelech that the citizens had gathered in the temple, so he led his forces to Mount Salmon. He took an axe and chopped some branches from a tree, then put them on his shoulder. Quick, do as I have done, he <coughs> told his men. So each, so each of them cut down some branches following Abimelech's example. They piled the branches against the walls of the temple and set them on fire. So all the people who lived in the t tower of Sheshem died, about 1,000 men and women. Man. Then Abimelech attacked the town of Therabaz and captured it. But there was a strong tower inside the town, and all of the men and women, the entire population, fled to it. They barricaded themselves in and climbed up to, on the roof of the tower. Abimelech followed them to attack the tower. But as he prepared to set fire to the entrance, a woman on the roof dropped a millstone that landed on Abimelech's head and crushed his skull. Wow. He quickly said to his young armor bearer, "Draw your sword and kill me. Don't let me, don't let it be said that that woman killed that a woman killed Abimelech." So the young man ran him through with his sword, and he died. When Abimelech's men saw that he was dead, they disbanded and returned to their homes. In this way, God punished Abimelech for the evil he had done against his father, murdering his seventy brothers. God also punished the men of Sheshem for all their evil. So the curse of Jotham, son of Gideon, was fulfilled. There you go. Nasty person, huh? What a nasty person. What's going on tomorrow? Tola becomes Israel's judge. Jair becomes Israel's judge. The Ammonites oppress Israel. Jephthah becomes Israel's judge. What he says about judges, huh? Jephthah's vow. Ephraim fights with Jephthah. Esau becomes the judge. Elon becomes the judge. Abdon becomes the judge. Huh? I wonder if like years and years and years pass before this. Yeah, for 10 years. Yep, all these people born and died. A lot of time is passing in this book of Judges. I mean, just time is just passing and passing and passing quickly, hundreds and hundreds of years. So there you have it. That's through the Bible in one year, day 92. Catch up with any may have missed. You want to see you got the whole thing in. Okay. Give us a like if you think about it. But until next time, see you tomorrow.